William Klein revolutionized the art of fashion photography. An amazing feat, considering the fact that the guy couldn't care less about clothes, was a complete outsider to the fashion scene, and didn't know a thing about cameras. We recently caught up with the man who broke all the rules at his Paris studio. The whole point of using my photographs was that the woman who's going to flip through the magazine is going to stop maybe a few seconds before flipping to the next page uh, because it was sort of a shock value. Though by today's standards, his photographs may not be considered shocking. You have to remember that Klein was operating at a time when fashion photography was meant to be static, genteel, and pretty. Klein decided to cut through what he thought was a bunch of bull. Originally trained as a painter, the former abstract artist began to experiment with photographic ideas, and in the process, brought a number of technical innovations to the craft. I'd use a wide angle lens, I'd make sets, I would change perspective, I would use the multiple flash, I would use the flash with the blur, I mean a whole lot of things. And each time I did a collection, it was a different idea. I was the first to use a telephoto lens where I put girls in, uh, girls, models, in, uh, in traffic, uh, in crowds all over the place. And I'd be 200 yards away and shoot them uh, without the people around them knowing that they were being shot. Photograph, one of these, it's a famous photograph. One of the things I did when I uh, used the telephoto lens and the girls were walking around, and this is in Rome, and the men thought they were whores or something, but they didn't see me. Uh, you know, they didn't know why they were walking back and forth all the time. It's... I used mirrors a lot. The girls would be lugging mirrors in the streets and uh, uh, made no sense. A lot of things were rather absurd. In the early 60s, the New York-born Klein made the transition from photographer to filmmaker and was given unprecedented backstage access to one of Yves Saint Laurent's first collections. In a few minutes, Saint Laurent's new collection will begin. This time his career is on the line. If it bombs, Saint Laurent must close his fashion house. If it works, perhaps he'll be the duo of tomorrow. And then there was nobody there, nobody at all. I was the only one taking photographs. Now, you go backstage, there are more people backstage than there are out front. You know, you have about 45 television associates, big, big, <laughs> big tents around Claudia Schiffer, you can't photograph her ass, uh, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's uh, like a battlefield. <laughs> Klein produced and directed his first feature film, a parody of the fashion world called Who Are You, Polly Magoo? The characters in this movie seem remarkably similar to the real-life fashion types Klein had been exposed to as a leading photographer. It was a film about bullshit in general. It was a film about fashion, television, media, and, and movies. So uh, fashion was a part of it, but a lot of people thought it was a film about fashion. La mode est morte! Vive la mode! À la ligne! 
l'ingénieur du gêneur, le magicien des mollets, le géomètre des cuisses, l'architecte des reins, le grand metteur en scène du corps féminin, Isidore Ducasse a recréé la femme. Save for a few commercials he directed in the 70s, Klein left the fashion world for almost two decades to pursue other film and photography projects. When he returned to fashion in the late 80s, he was up to his same old tricks, creating groundbreaking backstage photographs and short films on fashion designers. Lately, Klein's work has undergone a resurgence in popularity, and a number of his photographs, originally rejected 40 years ago for being too weird, are now being treated like misplaced treasures. This photograph, which looks like the end of the world, right? It's like an atom bomb exploding over New York. A big perfume company wants to use this as their ad. And so they're buying this thing outright for a lot of money, I don't have to leave a finger, lift a finger. I give them the photographs and the gallery negotiates it. And they're going to use this all over the world for three years. And I find that very amusing because these are photographs that uh, have, been, have been forgotten uh, to a certain extent for many years.